Hi people, not long ago I made a video talking about the two talent builds I'd recommend Restoration Druids to use when grinding dungeons in the Burning Crusade, link to that video below. In the video I briefly talked about how Munkin form might actually be beneficial to Resto Druids and how I would have to make a separate video looking into that more in detail. And so here we go. I'll first go through some basic numbers and mechanics, then briefly talk about the talent build to go for, followed by talking about how I believe you would best incorporate this into your gameplay, then go through some essential items for this build, and then finally talk about if and how this might be useful in the Burning Crusade and game content, such as heroic dungeons and raids. Check the description for timestamps as well. As of pre-patch and throughout classic TBC, Moonkins have a passive chance on a hit that allows them to occasionally regain mana upon striking a mob with melee attacks. The amount of mana you regenerate is based upon your attack power in Moonkin form. Simply multiply your attack power with 0.3 and that will be the amount of mana you regenerate per proc. Weapon speed essentially does not matter as this ability is based upon a proc rate of 15 procs per minute. Simply multiply your weapon's attack speed by 0.25 and you have the proc chance per hit. For example, a 3.0 speed staff will have a 75% chance to proc per hit. 0.25 is 15 divided by 60 by the way. The mana cost of Munkin form itself is a percentage of your base mana, something like 20% with a natural shapeshifter talent, which reduces the cost of all shapeshifting by 30%, makes this equal to 191 mana at level 60, which is very low all things considered. Supposing you're level 60 in full restoration gear with an okay weapon for this kind of thing, you should be looking at roughly 128 mana per proc, or an average of 160 mana per 5 while attacking. If you're lucky and you manage to obtain the End of Dreams, you should instead be looking at 198 mana per proc, or 248 mana per 5 when attacking. On top of mana regained, you should also pick and use Omen of Clarity. Free casts won't be too rare and they are very valuable. Also, you really don't have to worry about getting cleaved while standing in melee range. Boomkin form also increases your armor gain by 400%, giving you the same armor as a feral tank. But make sure to stand behind the mob to avoid unnecessary damage regardless, and to avoid parries. As I have already talked about the talent build in the video I mentioned earlier, I will only very briefly go through the talents here. You grab DPS talents down until the 5th row in the balance tree, at which point you find some talents that actually increases healing done. Once you've filled out row 7, you start filling out the restoration tree. I'd recommend you to go for this build at 60 and then reach for this build as you level up. You can exchange the points in nature's focus for naturalist instead, but due to the down rank penalty, the useful ranks of healing touch are actually quite weak and personally I would probably just avoid it altogether. When utilizing this mechanic, I'd recommend you to hot up your tank with max rank regruff and rejuvenation and possibly life bloom if you have it. Instantly followed up by going into moonkin form and switching weapons at the same time and then auto attack. Changing gear after you've applied the hots will not affect their healing, they snapshot with the current gear you have when you casted them. When switching forms you'll want two macros, one for entering Moonkin form and switching to a suitable attack power weapon, and one for leaving Moonkin form and switching back to your healing weapons. I'll have both of those in the description below. Note that switching into Moonkin form triggers the GCD and equipping a new weapon resets the swing timer. However, leaving Moonkin form does not trigger the GCD, so you can cast heals instantly after going out of Moonkin form. It will probably be suitable to stay in Moonkin form until the tank's hearts have run out, at which point you should pop out of form, apply new heals to everyone who needs it, and then go back into form and continue your attacks. It's probably best to get a feeling for the mobs in the instance before you start shifting back and forth, just to avoid having people dying from you being a big bird, a mau noob. When you are in Munkin form, you might want to cast Fairfire on some mobs. 
Casting Fairy Fire resets your swing timer, and because of that, you want to cast it right after you've done a swing. Resetting your swing timer from 0.3 seconds down to 0 again is not that bad. However, resetting it from 3.1 seconds down to 0 is very bad. The best way of doing this reliably is to look for the swing animation. As soon as you notice the chicken starting the swing, cast Fairy Fire. This way you'll only lose a few tenths of a second on your auto attack. Personally, I think it's only worth casting Fairy Fire if you have a melee heavy group. However, you might want to Fairy Fire your melee target regardless to decrease the chance of missing. If you frequently shift but only manage to get a few procs each time, the cost of shape shifting will be eating up a substantial portion of all mana gained. Make sure to heal people to full and haunt the tank properly before going back into Moonkin form, so that you can stay in Moonkin form for a good amount of time. In order for this shift dancing to be beneficial, you'll need a weapon with a lot of attack power. Luckily, there are weapons with exactly this kind of stats. Things like the End of Dreams, Blessed Karaji Warhammer, the Maze of Unending Life, the Druid version of Atiesh, or even Ursul's Claw are all perfect for this kind of thing. If you don't have any of the first four, you're still in luck, as Ursul's Claw drops in Hellfire Ramparts, meaning you should be able to get your hands on it rather shortly after entering Outland. There are actually a lot of weapons with bonus attack power to Druids in shapeshifting form. If you're interested in looking through all of them, there's a link in the description below. Note that a weapon with so-called feral attack power has a massive impact on your mana gains, and I don't think this playstyle will be beneficial unless you have one of them. Or it will at least be much harder to find situation where it is a mana gain to switch into Munkin form for a couple of swings. But like I said, it should be rather easy obtaining Ursul's Claw from Halfire Ramparts if you don't have anything else. Although I see big potential for this dancing when grinding dungeons from 60 to 70, I am a bit more skeptical about its usefulness at max level. I'm sure there are many situations where you can sneak in some Moonkin melees, but the question is whether that will actually save you time in the long run. Maybe you'll still have to wait for other casters to drink up anyway. But then again, with a nice chunky weapon, such as the Earth Ward, which is obtained by reaching Exalted Reputation with Scenarian Expedition, just finding 10 seconds to melee will roughly give you something like 600 mana. We'll have to see how useful it actually is when grinding from 60 to 70, and then see again whether it's useful in the end game content. Anyway, that was all from me for now. Make sure to buff my channel with a nice sub like. I'll be back soon with another video, and until then, see ya!